everybody. Today we are here to talk about one of my favorite subjects. When I hear caregivers say, oh, I am so tired of being a caregiver. How do we work with stubborn aging parents, spouses, and other family members and not go crazy ourselves? Stay with me for the caregiving chat of the day. I'm Pamela Wilson, and for the past 20 years, I have been on call 24-7, helping caregivers and aging adults solve caregiving problems, and today I do that through my website, which is PamelaDWilson.com, and there is a link in this video post to one of my favorite articles that I've written. It's in my blog, and it's called, I'm So Tired of Being a Caregiver. Click on the link, check out the blog post, and please share these videos and posts with other caregivers who may be struggling to manage all of the responsibilities of caregiving. Let's talk about stubborn care receivers. And I'll give an example and then I'll share some tips. Over the past 20 years, I have had so many clients who were closed-minded about getting help. So why does that happen in the first place? Sometimes it happens because of low health literacy, which we talked about the other day. The United States is not a society that talks about proactive health or about being proactive about health. That results in a need for care. It results in a need for caregiving. And even if you are already in a situation where you need care or you're a caregiver, there's still time to be proactive. You can make changes, you can maintain your situation. In some cases, you can actually improve your situation. So one, be open-minded, being stubborn about care, unless you're being stubborn about wanting to get better, usually doesn't work out the way that you think. Let's talk about being proactive. Many clients, as they age, have physical difficulties, balance issues. They tend to fall, they walk less. The proactive part of that is to remain as physically active as long as you can throughout your life and start as young as possible. For me, I go to the gym three to five times a week so that I can maintain my physical strength, my balance, so that I don't have problems when I'm older. Even an aging adult who walks 10 minutes a day, it can make a huge difference. So many aging adults have health problems. They have balance problems. They don't want to use a walker because it's only those old people over there who use walkers. You have poor balance, you're a fall risk, maybe you now need to wear oxygen. Seriously, what are you thinking? Do you want to fall? Do you want to break a hip? Do you want to end up in a nursing home? Those are the consequences of not being proactive and thinking logically about being a fall risk. What happens when I fall? I could fall and have to leave my home for a nursing home. And if you have to carry other things, for heaven's sakes, there are walkers out there that have little pockets in front. They have chairs that you can sit on that actually the seat lifts up and you can put things inside. Why not think logically and be proactive to avoid an accident? This is just an isolated example of balance and a walker. There are so many other situations out there where aging adults don't think clearly. Why is that? Partially fear of what might happen, fear of how I might look if I use a walker. Really, there should be greater fear about the consequences, but when we become overwhelmed in caregiving, as we've talked about before, our brain just shuts off. We don't think about consequences. We don't think about being proactive. All we think about is today, and how am I gonna get through today without thinking about what could happen tomorrow, six months from now, a year from now. Many of these subjects are what we talk about in my caregiving courses. I have two. 
One is stay at home, the other one is power of attorney. And as we've talked before, the courses are about caregiving, but because caregiving takes more than love, it takes a lot of different skills, we also talk about the skills of time management, organization, planning, how do you work with healthcare providers, and all of the things that you should do. Now, many caregivers will say, oh, I don't have time for that, I can't think about it. Would you rather have an emergency happen? Would you rather have an accident happen that will take more of your time and more of your effort? Many times it's difficult to become motivated to do anything until a disaster happens or until we're scared to death about a diagnosis or scared to death that something is going to happen. Sometimes in caregiving it takes just a car crash to motivate us to do something. And I say a car crash, but again, it could be a health diagnosis, a serious illness, a fall from an aging loved one that now means you have to do things. It's better to get help before something happens. It's much better to be proactive. And through my courses, you actually gain caregiving skills, you gain confidence, you gain knowledge of conditions, situations that you never thought might happen. And that's where the pro being proactive comes in. If you can prevent something that is going to get worse or prevent something that's going to cost more money from a care perspective or cost you more of your time, that is the wise thing to do. There's a saying out there that a wise heart is an intelligent heart. So caregivers, if you want to stop saying, oh, I'm so tired of being a caregiver, be proactive. The other thing that you can do is to have honest conversations with aging parents and spouses who are refusing care. Talk about the consequences. Talk about what might happen if they refuse. And also talk about the fact that you are having this conversation to prevent a negative consequence. And if that negative consequence happens, whatever it is, a fall, a hip fracture, having to leave the home, you want to make it clear that this was a subject that was previously discussed that they refused to address. Because many aging parents and spouses, you know who they blame when something happens? They blame the caregiver. And that is so unfair, which is why it's important to have these conversations to be very direct about consequences and to say, look, I will help you, but I want to talk about today that this may be a consequence that could happen. If that consequence happens, this is what happens. You leave your home, you move into a nursing home, we have to spend all of your money, you go on Medicaid, that's the situation. Would you rather be proactive here today or not be proactive in the future? I'm Pamela Wilson. My website is PamelaDWilson.com. Please click on the link in this article, read the uh, post about I am so tired of being a caregiver. Share these videos, share this information with other caregivers. I so appreciate you being here with me today. Have a fabulous day and I will see you tomorrow in another video.